get our hands on this thing and see what we got. We definitely had them all around us. I'm talking literally all around us. How the emotions starting to set in. Unbelievable. <laughs> Down to the wire. He's coming in. Thank you. This week on Double Lung, Kenneth and Paul are taking the back seat and asked me if I could do an episode. 2020 has been a, uh, a pretty rough year for a lot of people, and uh, my family were hit especially hard this year in July. Um, my father, um, who's, who's been my best friend since I was a kid, he passed away unexpectedly. Um, so Kenneth and Paul thought it would be a great idea to take these next couple weeks and show some highlights of our hunts uh, that we've done together. My father and I started filming when I was 19 years old. Uh, I'm, I'm 38 years old now, so I mean we've we've been in the woods nonstop together, and we've had an amazing hunting career on film. So we're going to take this week and next week, and uh, and just show you some hunts uh, from the past in memory of my father, and then some of those hunts that were uh, that were a little more current that that we did last year and even this year. So I really hope you guys enjoy the uh, the next couple weeks. Uh, I hope you really enjoy this episode. Uh, it means a lot to me, and uh, I know it would mean a lot to my father. It's the second day of season here in the state of Ohio, although really it's mine and Jaren's first night. Last night we wanted to hunt this spot on this food plot, this new box blind that we built, and uh, we've been seeing a lot of bucks, but last night the wind was the wrong direction we just don't want to risk blowing one of these bucks out especially first day of season tonight we have a better wind it's more out of the south which is pretty good for this this location but what we have we have a lot of brassicas out here beans down through here has been very dry it's, it's 80 some degrees right now it's really warm but we have ponds on both sides of us so we're expecting to see these bucks come out of here out of from over here by this pond, come in from their bedding, get water, then come out and start feeding on these brassicas. wind being wrong on the opening evening for our spot, the location where the, all these bucks were coming into, we just decided to back off, get a better wind, and try it another day, which today we had the right wind, was ideal. Uh, south wind, which is good for this spot, and you see, patience, 20 yard shot, double lungs, game over. This segment is brought to you by Talent Roofing, quality roofing since 1987. Apple Cracker, supercharged deer feed. Alamo Precision Rifles, the best rifles on this side of the Pecos. Now we're gonna go back into 2011. 
this was a destination hunt that uh, that my dad dreamed about his whole life. Um, he wanted to go hunt caribou. So we put a hunt together, uh, me, dad, and his good buddy Steve Corwin. After about 24 hours of travel, we end up in Yellowknife. Uh, we had some flights get delayed. I feel like a buffalo shuffled around, pushed around, shoved around, delayed. We've been to what, three terminals trying to find a plane to get on? Unreal. Just uh, took a little bit longer to get there than normal, but not a big deal. We get to our hotel and it's really late and our float plane is leaving early the next morning. After a really short night in the hotel, uh, we got up, got showers, got shaved, and decided to get the cameras out, get all of our gear, get our boots laced up, and take off. We had a driver scheduled to pick us up to take us out to the float plane. Um, picked us up in the van, we load our gear, we go out to the float plane, meet some of the other guys going to be in camp. We're hunting a really awesome area. Um, not very many people hunt there. There's only 40 hunters a year that hunt this area. Um, so it's really cool. There's eight of us in camp at a time, only five weeks a season. We're going in for week three. After flying for about three hours, we start descending a little bit and I can see the spike camp. Uh, so I pull out my little my little handheld camera to do a little bit of uh, POV stuff. And I see this camp. I mean, it's, it's very basic, tents. There's a little trapper's cabin. It's just on a peninsula just outside of a, uh, an old air base. We get all of our gear off the plane, that way the guys that have already been there for a week can load up their stuff and, uh, and head back to Yellowknife. We're just sleeping, two in a tent, very low rise tents. I mean, these things are only four feet tall, six and a half feet long, egg foam crate in it. Uh, so we brought our, our nice sleeping bag, some of the basic gear. What we have now since we're landing and just starting at the spike camp is we have a lake for our water source, that's our bath. And that's it. So, I mean, it's pretty rough, but I'm more than excited to be up here with my father. I mean, he and I have hunted several places together, but nothing in, in such a remote location. So, first morning of the hunt, I'm more than excited. It's about a quarter till seven. Um, we're still at the spike camp, just getting breakfast uh, out of the way, loading up our gear. We're hunting a little bit different. We're gonna have a couple different groups kind of travel close to each other to see if we can pick up some extra footage. The major migration still hasn't come through. We aren't seeing anything on the shorelines around here, but we're gonna get in the boats, start traveling, try to see if we can find a group and see if we can put a good stock on one. I'm getting really excited now. It's, uh, it was an awesome night sleeping. I mean, it's for roughing it. I mean, it was pretty awesome. Uh, so we're gonna get after it. So we load up the boats. Um, get everything ready, geared up, and we take off across the lake. We cruise out and go into the first spot where we get up in glass. We actually saw a nice herd of muskox. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have muskox tag. This is where you uh, gotta double check everything. We uh, were under the understanding that we had got our muskox tag. Uh, somewhere along, along the line, there was some confusion. We didn't have, we don't have our muskox tag and we just would come across a nice group of bulls and big old boy in there, one of them. It's been a pretty good situation to take one, but uh, that's, how it's got it. that's how it goes, you know. So, you know, make sure that you've got everything lined up before you come out here. So, I think everything else, we're good to go. But, man, that's a shame, that's a nice bull. So we go to our first spot. Um, we're just looking to go glass. We climb up on this high spot of this island start glassing and man sure enough there's a bull on the island we're on he's not a great bull but i'm looking at him and i think that i have a chance to stalk this bull and possibly get it done with my bow so we decide to go ahead and make a move and sure enough this bull actually crosses us turns circles and comes right to us i'm assuming he's never seen a, a human before he definitely has never seen me so he he had no clue what what our intentions were and he, he starts working up towards us and he ends up crossing. I hit him with a range finder at 37 yards. And I mean, I drew my bow, I settled in for the shot. Um, I, I settled my 30 yard pin dead center of his body, knowing it's gonna drop just a touch. And I mean, I, I plan on taking his heart out. I shoot, as soon as I drop the string, I just see my arrow is hot. I mean, when I say hot, like hot, hot. It was, um, it was very high. So I'm confused, I turn around, I'm looking at dad. We're off the boat, I mean, it's not a very big bull. Had him, he came right to us. I mean, he was 38 yards. I don't know what happened. I actually laid my 30 in the center and shot over him. I don't know what happened. I mean, I checked everything last night. Everything was perfect. I don't know. 
This segment is brought to you by Reveal Cellular Camera, always in the game. Dylan Manufacturing, fiberglass deer blinds. B3 Archery, built the best, by the best, for the best. We spent a good chunk of the day stopping at a few areas, um, glassing and saw a couple young bulls, nothing that we really wanted. Then dad looks up and he says he thinks he sees a bull. So we stop the boat, we start glassing from the water, and sure enough, I mean, there, there's two bulls. Dad made a really great spot on them. I mean, these bulls, I and mean, we're, we're a mile and a half to two miles out in the water. And now we gotta think of is, what can we do to get to them? How can we get to them quick enough? What's our goal? I mean, are we gonna try to kill one with a bow? Or are we going to just get a couple on the board and, and not worry about it? Luckily enough, we get in, get the boat in, and get our gear out. And there's nobody more excited than me and dad to, uh, to make a stop on these bulls. We have a really good idea on our approach on these bulls. I mean, we gotta see the land from a couple miles out. Um, we are both very experienced hunters. And at this point, we don't need a guide. We had the boat ride. We just wanna take off and get up there to these bulls. So we grab the camera gear, dad has the rifle, um, I have my bow and we take off. I mean, we have about a mile, mile and a quarter or so on ground to go inland to keep a vantage point on these bulls. And as we're going, I mean, we kind of pull away from the pack and dad and I were kind of discussing like, okay, what's the game plan? Because I have my bow and I mean, he has the rifle in his pack and we're just trying to figure out what should we do? And dad said, we came here to kill caribou and you were wanting to kill him with a bow and that's our goal. We're gonna go with the bow if it gives us any opportunity. So we, we take off and we're starting looking and the closer we get to the bulls and we spot them and we still have a half mile um, and we're looking and I'm looking at the train like, okay, what can we do to get into where I can get into that 80, 90 yard range to, uh, to make a shot with the bow? When we got up to this point, we just got to a stopping point. Um, the bulls actually came around the edge of this bay and they started working kind of towards us. So it, it was over. I mean, the, the chance of killing with the bow wasn't going to happen or, or it was going to be very low odds. So we decide, hey, dad, you're up first. You take the rifle, um, I'll run the camera. Let's just knock a couple down and we'll worry about the bow later. We're having a good time and we'll stay positive and hopefully we'll come across some good ones. We get our gear set and dad gets the rifle set up. I mean, it's on a bipod and I'm running the rangefinder for him. That way we know what we're doing as far as uh, yardages. Like I say, I mean, we're capable of shooting, shooting at a half a mile with this rifle. Um, goal is, is, is that 200 yard range. But uh, if we need to make a long shot, we can do that. Um, and these bulls are up 400 yards and then they just turn, they start coming. Um, so everybody else is up there and, and our whole thing is now is just wait. I mean, we have time. Um, they can't go anywhere. We can see for a mile. We have a gun we're capable of shooting at a half mile. Um, and they're actually coming towards us, which is a bay and us. So there's only about 250 yards there. So they're gonna work on this pinch point. We're gonna get that 200 yard shot. As the bulls are approaching, dad's trying to decide which one to shoot. They're both very, very good bulls. Um, one is fairly wide. Um, with good shovels. The other caribou was narrow, but had a nice shovel, really good bez. But he has a gun in his hand, so he's just looking at attributes that he wants to. This is an animal he's wanted to shoot his whole life. As they're trotting along, they, they stop at about 220 yards, and as soon as they stop, Dad places a bullet high shoulder in, uh, in this caribou bull. As soon as the gun cracks, that caribou drops. We go into, hey, let's double up. So Dad and I switch roles, he jumps back to the camera, I roll up to the rifle and, uh, and, and get down, get set. The bull that I I'm, have the target on is actually moving closer, so he's in that 160, 175 yard range, which it's a no brainer. Uh, turn the turret back to 200 and he stopped. I put one through his, uh, through his rib cage and double lunged him and that bull expired. Now the fun begins because we've been out all day hunting. Now we have two bulls down. Um, we're still about 15, 20 miles from the main camp, or 20 miles from the spike camp. So now the fun begins. Oh, double shovel. Good tough double back scratchers. Biggest part of my life, I've always wanted to come out here and hunt and chase caribou around. And uh, 
feel very grateful that I've had the opportunity to do that. As the situation played out, there was no chance to stock when he dumped the first one. This one didn't completely hightail it, so he gave a decent shot to, uh, to double up on him. So this is the only two mature bulls we've seen today. This segment is brought to you by Elite Archery, makers of the world's most shootable bows. Kuyu, the most advanced mountain hunting clothing and equipment on earth. Clay Gully Outfitters, Florida's premier hunting and fishing facility. This segment is brought to you by Fox Pro, high performance game calls. Eberly Stock, our favorite hunting pack. Vortex Optics, the force of optics. On this hunt, we're back in Southern Ohio. We're hunting the prime spot. Um, Dad has his bow in hand and, and we are uh, our hunting food source and, and we're gonna get right back after a really good deer. They're starting to be somewhat a little bit more predictable and a little more consistent. But it's still not easy. We just have we're struggling a little bit on picking these bucks up in the daylight. We've had them close before camera light and after camera light, and we've had them in good camera light, but not close enough. It's just getting the two things going together. So, but to see this evening, we're set up on this pick corn field, brassica field here, soybean still standing over here to our left. And then on the other side of us, probably 300, 350 yards away, Brad and Steve are set up in a, a blind ambition bail blind. We, me and Steve just moved it in there yesterday and we had deer right on top of it. You know, that bail blind's awesome. You get in, you get in it, you can put it in, and the deer will come close to it without getting used to it. So it just looks like a, like a bale hay. So hopefully one of us will get to pick up one of these good bucks. have to wait and see. We just lose light fast. I want to come in. We had so many deer here, but it looked like I hit him back a little bit. So we'll just have to, we'll just have to play it by ear and see. Right now, we know he was right here because we just found the arrow. And uh, we know where he went in. The indications was he went in right over here, so. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> this is nuts. We've got 
we've got a very serious coyote problem here you know now looking at it the deer was the deer was dead before we left the stand you know uh, but I just wasn't 100% sure of the shot so we did what I know is best to do is back out but uh, coyotes didn't leave us much you know Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Um, it really means a lot to me for, to be able to bring you guys some of these hunts. Hopefully you can join us next week to, to see a few more hunts from my father and bring this thing full circle up to what we're doing now.